We have some interesting topics to get into today, so I'm gonna roll a new intro and then we'll jump right in. What's happening everybody? Welcome back to The Hot Take, a new series on the channel where I give my thoughts on sneaker news as well as upcoming releases. Last week, one of the biggest topics we talked about was the Trophy Room Ones and all of the early pairs that were just flooding the third party market. Since then, people have came out and said that they think those pairs were fake, that all of those pairs that we saw in the photos and the resellers who had hundreds and hundreds of pairs, that all of those were fake. Usually, in my opinion, when you have two drastically different stories I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle do I think that all of those pairs that 11,000 pairs just went missing from the trophy room inventory absolutely not that would be the hugest flaw in the supply chain ever and Nike would definitely start holding people accountable but do I also believe that all of those pictures from all of those boutiques and resellers were fake pairs, unauthentic pairs? No. Think about it, it would have to be a huge conspiracy on everybody's behalf to number those pairs like that and just get everything in the work. No, I think that would be a huge conspiracy. So I think the truth lies somewhere in the middle. I think some of those pairs were genuine backdoored pairs. I don't know if Marcus Jordan backdoored them himself. I don't think that he would have the motivation to do that. But I think, you know, somebody along the way in the supply chain between them being manufactured and them getting to his store or Nike, wherever they were supposed to be distributed, I think there was a leak somewhere in that process. And I also believe, just like with every other popular release, that some of those pairs were probably fake. So I think a lot of them are real with some fakes thrown in the mix just like every other popular release that happens nowadays. Another thing I saw a lot of people saying in the comments of the last video, as well as other people just online because today was release day, was that the trophy rooms are garbage. So why is it such a big deal that they were backdoored or that they're fake if the trophy rooms are a garbage shoot anyway? I personally, I never said that the trophy rooms were trash. I don't think that it's a bad shoe. I think it's a very good looking shoe. If it wasn't a good looking shoe, all of this commotion would not happen. There have been some ugly ass shoes okay trophy room has made collabs in the past that people thought were ass the trophy room air jordan one is basically a chicago air jordan one with a little bit of backstory behind it just a little bit of extra pizzazz some extra flair i personally really like it but i think the hype around the shoe just got way too out of control and that is why it was a shit show today for the release if you didn't go for the air jordan one trophy room this morning then i'll catch you up a little bit there was a rumor that the sneakers would release at 12 p.m noon on the sneakers app so noon eastern standard time for the sneakers app and there was also a raffle being held on the trophy room store website now the raffle is really where the fuckery happened in my opinion because the sneakers app we'll get to that later but the sneakers app is always trash so let's talk about the raffle first so the raffle started out as a form it was some type of form it wasn't necessarily a google doc i don't think it was some type of like form builder that they made and the form shut down for whatever reason it shut down and they switched over to taking entries via email and of course because of hundreds and thousands of people going for this shoe the email got full this is something that trophy room should have predicted so their excuse of oh due to overwhelming response we're gonna shut it down and reopen it at noon I feel like that was, it was bullshit. We knew that this release was gonna be crazy. We knew that the demand was super high around these sneakers. So why wasn't Trophy Room Store able to predict that? As a company, as a company that is an extension of Nike, an extension of Jordan brand, y'all were overwhelmed. I just feel like that's a cop out. Whenever boutiques talk about overwhelming response, I really feel like that's a cop out and they just were not prepared and they dropped the ball and something went wrong on their end. But I don't think it has anything to do with being overwhelmed because at this point, these apps, these websites, these stores should expect the kind of traffic that comes with these these releases. As of right now when I'm filming this video, Trophy Room has not selected their winners, but I wouldn't expect to see more than a handful of people actually win the Trophy Room raffle. Now let's move on to the Sneakers app release. The Sneakers app release was highly speculated, but there were a lot of people shooting it down, saying that there weren't enough 
pairs left in inventory for the sneakers app to do their own drop but it did happen today at noon eastern standard time nike went ahead and dropped the trophy room air jordan one on the nike sneakers app i wasn't surprised i saw this coming and also like i expected only three to four people actually won from what i saw now maybe some people kept their w's quiet not everybody does the social media thing that's completely possible that more than three to four people actually hit on these sneakers but didn't post it on social media but from what i saw from what i saw only about three to four people actually got these shoes and i said that last week i said that it would be a slim to none chance to get these but us as sneakerheads the sneaker community whatever sneaker enthusiasts this is what we do week after week we build ourselves up for these releases and we take outs right now the trophy rooms are going for anywhere between 2600 and 4000 the small sizes you know between seven and nine those smaller end sizes are definitely going to get your head cracked if you're any of those sizes you're looking at about you know three thousand to four thousand dollars I would definitely recommend holding these if you were lucky enough to get a pair. If any of you out there lucked up on a pair of these, I would definitely sit on them because the prices are only going to go up, especially if this drama continues. If you have your paperwork and all of that stuff from Trophy Room, if you get a pair from Trophy Room or from Nike sneakers in the, in the fucking blue laces that everybody is going crazy for, if you have everything that you need to sell these, I would just sit on them and wait for the prices to go up. And the Trophy Room Jordan 1 wasn't even the only Jordan 1 to release today. We had another very popular Jordan 1, the Air Jordan 1 High 85 in a neutral gray colorway. Personal favorite of mine. These were a must have for me and only because it's the first retro 85 that has actually been produced in my size. So this one was actually one that I was able to get and wear for the personal. So it was a must have for me. I really, really wanted these and I know for a lot of people out there they were saying it's just it's plain you know it's white and gray it's plain there's nothing wrong with plain plain doesn't always have to be bad i have plenty of sneakers and air jordan ones specifically that are bright and colorful and have all these different types of color blocking whatever plain is not always bad i'm cool with a nice white and gray i saw a few people who were able to secure a pair today and that's what's up the sneakers app has been super glitchy lately these weren't available everywhere in stores like the stores that they were available at were super sparse it didn't seem like stores got a lot of pairs at all so these were not easy to get if you were able to get a pair shout out to you that's definitely you know one of the best Jordan ones to release this year, in my opinion, so far, because it's very early in the year. If you're a reseller and you're waiting for the part where I say whether or not you should hold or sell, this is definitely another one that I would recommend holding, only because the prices are for sure gonna go up. This is a sneaker that not only OG Jordan collectors want, but also the hype beast, because it's very popular right now to buy old shit that looks new. So the 85, this is the first time that it's being retroed, and a lot of people are going to be into that because they've been buying 85 shoes like from the thrift shops and from here and there wherever else they've been picking them up so now that they have a new shoe that looks like something old the hype beasts are gonna go crazy for that so if you're a reseller and you can afford to hold i would say just sit on your pairs and watch your profits go up so we have a little bit of an update on the defective carmine sixes stores have reportedly started sending back their defective pairs to nike and the distribution center which i think is a good start i'm still worried about buying them but i think that's a good start and i'll talk about why in a little bit but one thing i did want to say before i get to that is this is something that bothers me about the sneaker community in general and that's people will argue with you over anything. People just like to make themselves feel good and right now it's that oh the Carmines aren't bleeding because suede bleeds and new buck doesn't. Listen I don't think anybody cares. The fact of the matter is the midsole should be white and if it's pink then that's defective. I don't think anyone cares about the choice of the word bleeding. I just want a clean shoe, that's it. And that is why I'm so worried about picking these up because even if you buy them clean on release day, who's to say that your pair won't start bleeding, transferring, color migration, whatever the case is, three months after you buy them, six months after you buy them, who's to say that your pair is gonna stay clean? So I'm personally gonna give it a couple of months, see how other people's pairs do after a couple of months, and then I'll go ahead and pick up my pair if everything is good. The last topic I wanted to get into is an interesting one, and that is Kicks. It is a service that allows you to rent sneakers. Now, personally, I think that the business model 
the business model of it is smart. And it's something that's been done in fashion for years where companies allow you to rent, you know, runway outfits for department store prices and they make it like a monthly subscription thing or a one-time thing, whatever the case may be. And now they've just taken that business model and applied it to sneakers, which I think is really smart. It's your bag. But I think that the people who use the service, I don't understand the motivation. Like, why are you renting these shoes? Are you renting them to flex? Cause that's hella weird. Like you're hella weird. If you're, if you're renting these to flex, that's, that's odd. But that's a thing now. Like that's just kind of running rampant in sneaker culture where people buy these shoes to flex because that's their thing. You know, the likes, the engagement, whatever and whatever means a lot to them. Another motivator or reason why I can see people using this service is because they want to create content. So if you're a YouTuber or Instagrammer, I can see you picking these up because you want to, I'm sorry, renting the sneakers, not picking them up because you're not keeping them. So renting the sneakers because you want to make a video out of it or something like that. And that just seems strange to me. Like don't tie your content directly to a product. You should still be able to create content regardless of what's happening or what products you have coming in because let's say there's a drought like when all the releases get pushed back and stuff like that you should still be able to create content or when COVID hit and people couldn't do mall vlogs anymore you should still be able to create content so as a content creator I just feel like that's not the best look to tie your content and what you produce to products. Now the way that the service works is there's basically different tiers, different subscriptions that you can choose and then that determines how many shoes you're able to rent at a time I believe and then once you pick a plan, you pick your shoes, you're able to wear them for as long as you want which I think is weird because if you're just wearing this shoe for like a month how is anybody else supposed to use the shoe? I don't know if they maybe have a time limit and they're just using for however long you want to make the service sound good, but there's actually a time limit. I don't know, it's, it reminds me of like renting video games or something. Like when you're done with it, you drop it in the mailbox and send them back, which I also think is a little unsanitary. Like all of these people are now going to be sharing these shoes. It The whole thing just seems hella weird to me. The only way and reason that I see someone genuinely using this service is to buy a shoe that they're not sure about. So if you rent out, let's say a phone posit, like I've never, I've never even had my foot in a phone posit. So maybe I need to figure out my size or maybe I need to just see if the shoe, I'm even gonna like it on foot, if it's gonna work with my style. That's when I can see you renting a shoe. You know, you rent it for a couple of days, maybe you try it on with a couple of fits. And then if it doesn't work, you send it back. But to flex with it or to create content with it and then send it back, it just seems strange. But that's just my opinion. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give me a like, comment, subscribe, show a small YouTuber some love, and I'll check y'all out in the next one.